Okay, today we're going to talk about the styles editor for our dimension styles and the way that our drawing is set up. So if you go to manage this drawing, it's under styles editor. I want you to open that. And you can see if you go all the way to the top that ANSI is our default style. So if I click on ANSI, it tells me what the linear units are, what the decimal marker could be. You can have commas sometimes when you have uh, millimeters. Your view preferences, all these different things. We're going to leave that alone. And we're going to go to balloon styles. The ANSI balloon, there, I want you guys to look at this. There are different shapes. You could have just a circle for a balloon, or you could have a split balloon. And the split balloon is what I want you to keep. The top number is an item number that correlates to the parts list, and the bottom number is a quantity of those items in the assembly. So it will, it will automatically put that in there for you and give you a complete parts list with all the balloons correlating to it. Um, as far as the leaders go, everything is good with that. We just want to have our split balloons here with item and quantity. Center mark is the next thing that we're going to go to. We're going to go to the ANSI style because that's what we're going for here. Now, you may not have these set up correctly. This is a good rule of thumb. Your extension is D. So the length of this in comparison to the width of the gap is approximately one half. And I changed this to 064 and 032. So if you don't have that in your style right now, you can change it right now. If you, it's D is 100%, B is half of that. All right, when it does that, go ahead and hit save. If you change anything, hit save right then. So what that's going to do is make more breaks in our axial center lines. And it's, uh, so if your axial center lines are being solid right now, this is what's going to change it. Now if you go to the back, it stays in the, it, I'm sorry, it goes to this. It goes back to the last place that you were. Datum targets are essentially measurement points, but they're targets. They're points that are located on a part that is not flat. Anytime you have anything that's organic that you don't have one flat surface that has three points of contact that it can be stable, you're going to have pins or something holding that part up. Those are datum points or, or datum targets. In our dimensions, let's go to the ANSI, default ANSI right here. Now what you want to take off is leading zeros. In inches, we never have leading zeros. In angular or display, and I left my precision at two places here because most of our dimensions are going to be the majority of whatever the dimensions of your drawings are. So you could set that up as two places, three places, whatever precision that you need for most of your parts because remember, this is in your template. This is what it's going to all start out at, two places. So if you go to alternate units, this is where you would have inches and millimeters in those brackets. We're not going to have alternate units in ours, but in millimeters we do not have trailing zeros. In our text, you want to make sure that the text size is 0.12 tall. And in our tolerances inside of our dimensions, we also want to take away leading zeros. So that's, that's the rule of thumb for inches. Under your feature control frame, go ahead and expand that box. Under feature control frame, I'm going to go to ANSI. And saving the edits that I had is yes. Now, if your box is extremely large around your feature control frame, around your tolerances in GD and T, notice that your box is scaled to the text height with 35 thousandths on all sides of the text. That's the white space inside the box. That's what it's talking about. If you want to change the text size, maybe the text is too large, making the box huge, you're going to hit the pencil. Anytime you want to edit it, you're going to hit the pencil. Right here, you want to have this text type wants to be 0.12 as well. Go ahead and save that and hit the back button. The back button on this one took us right back to this 
situation here. In our units, we're going to take off leading zeros in our tolerances. So you're still in GDT, right here, feature control frame ANSI, and you're, here is general, you're going to go to the units tab and take off leading zeros. So when it says linear primary units, you're going to use common. That's what we set up with our dimensions. All right, save if you've done anything to that. The next one is the datum ID feature. So we're going to go to the ANSI one. And we want to make sure that that text is .12 as well. So if I click on this, it is .12 in here. If yours is not .12, go ahead and change that and save it. So .12 is going to be our blanket text height, dimension height, feature control frame text height, all heights. The only exception is when you have a title of a view. If it says what the view is, such as a section or a detail view, that's going to be twice that. All right, we're going to go, let me see, we don't need anything else here, so you're going to save that and say done. Now, you may want to set this up at home, but you have your template. Save your template, take it home. But if you wanted to export this, you can't export it, but you can import it at home. So, if I go to this style, I could import any other kind of style that I wanted, just like we did our application options file. Okay, so I'm going to save this now so that this drawing is correct every time. Now what I'm going to show you is how to change styles within the drawing. Anything you click on here and you right click, you can do anything you want with it. So if I right click on this feature control frame, a lot of yours came in large. Right click on it and edit the feature control frame style. You've already taken your template which was incorrect and you saved as to this. So this is going to be incorrect in those same manners. So feature control frame style, it's going to go straight to that in your styles manager. Anything you right click on and go to that style, center lines, dimensions, units, you can take off your leading zeros that way. So you would go right in here and make sure that this is .12, save it and say done, and all of your feature control frames will change your size because you've changed it in the style in this one drawing. That's why we're changing it in our template now. We don't want to do this every time. All right, if you have leading zeros and anything less than one integer, if you right click on that, you can edit the dimension style. It's going to bring up just exactly that. You're going to take off your leading zeros and in your tolerances, make sure you take that off too. Because when we put tolerances in a dimension, it overrides the tolerances in the tolerance block, either looser or tighter tolerance. What else did you have that was coming out weird? Anything else? Your center lines. Some of your axial center lines were solid, right? So if you come down and you select on a center line and right click, you can edit the center mark style. This is where you're going to have to remember 64 thousandths and 32 thousandths. If you don't have one break in here, you have to have at least one break in your center mark style. So if you think about all these categories, if you select anything from any of these categories, you can right click and edit that category style straight from the drawing. Now that only does it in each particular drawing. So as we've done that to our template, we shouldn't have problems in the future. So this one you're going to change the extension length. We're dropping that down to 64 thousandths and the gap to 32 thousandths, just half of that. 
Mm -hmm. That's when you get more breaks because this was much larger. So you may have multiple breaks, that's okay. But having no breaks is not okay. You can't see that it's a center line style.